Morning again, you guys, and uh, boy, what an honor for me. I'm really proud to be, uh, of course, we're taping this on uh, uh, December 7, uh, 2017, but Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, and we're out of Falcon Field uh, for a terrific uh, memorial flight, if you will. Uh, we're about to load up this uh, B-17G uh, with uh, four veterans of World War II who served all over uh, the world uh, during that conflict, and uh, it's an honor to be with them. Some of them uh, have probably, well, one was a tail gunner in a plane like this, and uh, others uh, were uh, flown all around uh, from here, of course, uh, to many parts of the world. And I want to introduce everyone on your right. This would be uh, Sergeant Vivian Wood. Uh, she's a Marine uh, veteran. Also next to her, Jim uh, Head, an Iwo Jima survivor, and uh, also a survivor of Iwo Jima, Oliver Babbitt. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, happy birthday. He had his birthday this week. And then uh, on your left, uh, that would be our friend Merle Russell, uh, who also uh, served, uh, let's see, Merle, uh, it was 14 years old. We'll start with you if you don't mind, my friend. You were sitting in church in Iowa yeah. on December 7th, 1941. If you can describe for us, what was that moment like? It must have been an, a, an amazing ripple through the church. How was it delivered? Was it the pastor who gave yes. the news? Pastor. Do you remember what he said and how it worked? Not really. Yeah. Uh, and uh, only you, that we were in war. Boy, yeah. had, had you had that feeling as a 14-year-old that something might be coming? Were you and your buddies talking about it, or no. total surprise? Total surprise. Didn't think that. Uh, you thought we'd be able to stay out of that uh, conflict. I'm sure. Now, as a 14-year-old, were you thinking, boy, I hope this thing's over before I turn uh, 16 or 17? Uh, really didn't think about it. Yeah. How old were you when you? Uh, joined the Air Corps. 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, quickly, your service was in England, or you yeah. we were based in England, based but in you England. were flying over Germany. What was your position on the Tail B-17? Uh, if you had to rank the positions, how do you put tail gunner? <laughs> the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't doubt. And how many missions for you? 32. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, thanks. We're so glad that you uh, uh, came back, and thanks so much for helping to uh, save Bye. the world. Yeah. I was farthest away from the gas tanks as you could get. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's always a silver lining, uh, isn't there? All right. So, well, uh, Mr. Babbitt, thank you. And, you know, do we all love a man who can still fit in his uniform? <laughs> love that. And uh, This is, this is uh, 64, 65 years old. Boy, well, it, it sure looks uh, sharp on you. <laughs> and uh, you are from Wisconsin, right? Right. Very good, and uh, if you don't mind uh, telling me, what's your hometown, and how did you get into uh, the service? How did that work for you? Nina, uh, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I was 16 and 17 when uh, I was a uh, senior, mm -hmm. and the war came, and I went down to the Marines, and. Uh, I was wearing glasses, and they weren't accepting glasses. Uh, you had to have 20-20 vision. And so I had to wait until I was 18. I went in at 18, uh, and I was... Uh, Did it take that long to memorize the eye chart? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they didn't... They didn't uh, uh, they weren't as picky by then, probably. No, no. Very good. Well, uh, and uh, I'll bring your uh, friend Jim uh, head in here. Uh, Jim, you both were on the island of Iwo Jima, that terrible battle that we've all heard so uh, much about. Um, certainly you didn't know one another at that time. You must have uh, shared stories. Uh, can you recount for us uh, those uh, terrible days, if you can kind of en encapsulate that experience for us? Well, it was, it was wild uh, when we got onto the beach. I, I didn't go on in on the first wave. I went in on the third day. Mm -hmm. So we had not not too much. Uh, the Japs were pushed back from mm -hmm. the beach, but uh, it was it was hell. Yeah. You know, even then. I'm sure. Well, thank you both. Uh, every for every <laughs> night was a nightmare. Mm. 10, 20, 30 would come out of the tunnels, kill as many as they could, and fight their way back in the tunnels to come out another night. Boy. 
And how long were you uh, on that island? I was there 11 months. Boy, oh boy. Well, thanks, thanks so much for your uh, service and for keeping us and for saving the world. And uh, finally, uh, Vivian, if we can come your way, uh, probably not many sergeants uh, uh, in the Marine Corps were ladies. Uh, did you have uh, other friends, uh, other women friends who uh, who were serving at the same time? Oh, yes. You must oh. have quite a sorority there, a, a real a shared bond. I, I didn't know him at the time, but I've kept track of him through the years, mm -hmm. and I still have a good friend. It's 97 over in Los Angeles. Love that. And what, what were your primary responsibilities? I was uh, personnel sergeant major, mm -hmm. and I helped uh, assign women to jobs. Mm -hmm. We were at Camp Pendleton oh, in see. California, uh, yeah. and they, uh, the people, different outfits would ask for different, like a jeep, a jeep driver or, or a secretary or something like that, and we just signed the different women to different jobs. Very good. Well, thank you for your service as well and for, again, for saving the world. They call you the greatest generation, and uh, I don't think that's uh, a bad way to describe you all. Uh, a big round of applause for, uh, for all of these folks. Thank you all so much. Uh, go ahead, have a seat if you like. I'd like to uh, chat uh, with our friend Mike Muller over here. Mike, this is your baby, Sentimental Journey, the B-17G, and it's a beautiful plane. I love the way it's... Uh, uh, liveried out with all that beautiful aluminum. Uh, what's it like to fly? It's a, it, it's a real experience to fly on this airplane. Uh, it's an especially important experience when we can fly with veterans that, that flew on them and fought in them. But it's, it's a great feeling. It's kind of a visceral experience. Mm -hmm. The engines are loud. Um, it vibrates. It's just, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, well, uh, as we as we walk around it, four, four engines, they leak all the time. I guess if they're not leaking, they're not working, if right? They, if they're not leaking, they're out of oil, which is not a good thing. <laughs> oh, boy. And uh, tell me, what would the, what's the typical story for one of these planes? What, what was its typical use, or where the was it flying? The use for these airplanes are best known for being used in Europe, although they were used all over the, all over the world. Uh, they're a long-range strategic bomber. Uh, they were built to take a bomb load uh, over into Germany, for example. Uh, they flew by the thousands in formations. Of, there were several thousand airplane raids. So if you can imagine eight miles of these airplanes, nose to tail in formation, flying over. Boy, I imagine uh, toward the end of the war especially, uh, Germans must have, I mean, townsfolk must have looked up and just seen the skies black with uh, these aircraft and known that the end was coming. They did, but you know, it's interesting. We've had, we've had people come out here who lived there and were bombed, and they said they welcomed us because we were freeing them. They were, they were being liberated. Mm -hmm. So they actually welcomed the sound and the sight of these airplanes. Wow, they really, uh, they are impressive, and uh, boy, they, they seem to be able to take a lot of punishment. Am I uh, right? The B-17 was famous for that. The most famous one was the uh, All-American. The tail was actually almost cut off uh, by, a, by a, a German aircraft that crashed into it. Oh, yes, I've seen that, those photographs. The, they finished the mission. They landed, and uh, uh, as they landed and the crew got out, the tail fell off. It <laughs> held together just long enough to get them home. Oh boy, there there is a God, that's for sure. Well, again, thank you so much for uh, for your service and for helping to keep this part of America's history alive and uh, flying. It's a real honor to meet your friend. Thank you. Yeah, Mike Muller, he's your uh, Colonel of in the uh, Commemorative Air Force and keeping this beautiful B-17 in the air. That's it for us, you guys. Uh, thanks for letting us take you on a little tour. We'll see you soon.